This is Tradeflow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Tradeflow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Saudi Arabia's state oil producer Aramco raised official selling prices, OSPs, for all crude grades sold to key market Asia for a second straight month in January, tracking robust gains in Middle East spot market last month. The price hikes, announced by the company on Sunday, were implemented despite a decision last week by the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries and their allies including Russia, a group known as OPEC+, Plus, to continue increasing supplies by 400,000 barrels per day in January. Global crude futures rose by more than $1 a barrel on Monday after Saudi raised prices. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, will continue with its supply adjustments for the oil market, the OPEC Secretary General said on Saturday. We will continue to do what we know best to ensure we attain stability in the oil market on a sustainable basis, Mohamed Barkindo said in a webinar organized by Italian think tank ISPI. Oil prices fell on Thursday after OPEC and its allies stuck to their existing policy of monthly oil output increases despite fears a release from US crude reserves and the new Omicron coronavirus variant would put renewed pressure on prices. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. The World Petroleum Congress kicks off this week with a sharply trimmed roster of energy executives and government ministers to grapple with the oil market's future as the spread of the Omicron COVID-19 variant disrupted travel. This year's four-day event, rescheduled from 2020 due to the pandemic, brings together the industry's main players about every three years. It was expected to feature officials from countries including Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, India and the United States discussing the role of new technologies and low-carbon strategies. But travel restrictions and worries over the new variant had organizers scrambling on Sunday to fill gaps in the agenda. Oil climbed by $2 a barrel towards $72 on Monday on hopes the Omicron coronavirus variant would have a less damaging economic impact if its symptoms proved mostly mild and as the prospect of an imminent rise in Iranian oil exports receded. Reports in South Africa said Omicron cases there had only shown mild symptoms and the top U.S. infectious disease official told CNN, it does not look like there's a great degree of severity, so far. Brent crude gained $1.85, or 2.7%, to $71.73 by 11.35 GMT while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude advanced $1.92, or 2.9%, to $68.18. Both benchmarks feel for a sixth week in a row last week. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Tin prices have nearly doubled from a year ago and are on course for their biggest annual rise in over 30 years, stinging big users of the soldering agent such as electronics firms, utilities, solar panel makers and appliance manufacturers. For automakers, which use tin in coatings, bearings, brake pads and batteries, the higher tin costs come on top of a semiconductor chip shortage and a spike in prices for aluminium and magnesium due to curbs on energy-intensive industries in China. Tin, whose main use is as a solder, has outperformed other industrial metals in 2021, gaining over 90% on the London Metal Exchange, LME. It is on course for its biggest annual rise since trading was relaunched in 1989, four years after the collapse of the International Tin Council forced a suspension. Copper prices got a boost on Monday after top metals consumer China cut its reserve requirement for banks, fanning hopes for stronger economic growth and industrial metals demand. Three-month copper on the London Metal Exchange had gained 0.3% to $9,449.50 a tonne by 10.30 GMT after trading in the red earlier and slipping 0.8% on Friday. China's central bank said it would cut the amount of cash that banks must hold as reserves, its second such move this year, releasing long-term liquidity to bolster slowing economic growth. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. China's soybean imports from the United States in 2021-22 are expected to fall sharply from last season after loading delays following Hurricane Ida. 
An early 2022 Brazil soy crop also shortened the U.S. export window to China, the world's top soybean buyer. China's total imports of U.S. soybeans for the marketing year that started on September 1 may drop by at least 20% to less than 30 million tons, according to analysts and top importers. U.S. farmers have just gathered their second largest soybean crop in history and typically export around 45 to 50% of annual output. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.